To truly understand color balance, you need to start at the nanometer scale. Light waves travel at different frequencies. We recognize these frequencies as color. The distance between each peak of the light wave is measured in nanometers. When a nanometer chart is displayed, it looks like this. Movie lights do not emit a balanced amount of color frequencies. That would be the holy grail of lights. Instead, they emit a combination of frequencies that when combined resemble a particular color of light, usually as close to white as possible. This is a typical and healthy nanometer scale for the light emitting from a white LED. The x-axis indicates the nanometer scale. The y-axis values the quantity of each wavelength from 0 to 100. This is a nanometer graph of a fluorescent light. They both achieve a white light, but by emitting a very different combination of wavelengths. This is a very useful chart that shows the wavelength characteristics of different types of light. As you can see, they all differ quite dramatically. Cinematographers measure these combinations of wavelengths as color temperature, or Kelvin. This is the Kelvin scale, of which I am sure most of you are very familiar with. Tungsten movie lights sit about 3200 Kelvin, and daylight sits around 5600 Kelvin. As you can see, none of the lights shown here have the same color temperature. This can cause difficulty when mixing different types of movie lights when you are looking for a balanced color. Thus, the very technical, complicated, and confusing job of filtering wavelengths has to be calculated and introduced to the different lights to balance their color temperatures. LED lights, however, are changing the landscape of cinematography in so many ways. You may be familiar with the term CRI, or Color Render Index. This index breaks down the reflected color properties of the light and splits them into 15 strips representing different colors. The ability to match the color of each strip is measured in percentage. All the values are combined, and a CRI rating is the combined ratings of all the strips. A rating of under 60 is poor and will have a hard time matching other lights or ambient light. A rating from 60 to 90 is good, but not close enough to match seamlessly. And a rating of 90 to 100 will be able to match the temperature of the LED light to the temperature it is being set up in. Conventional lights like tungsten or HMI cannot alter their color temperature. The tungsten light is around 3200 Kelvin, but all other incandescents fall below 3200 Kelvin. HMI lights vary dramatically, but are all rated at 5600 Kelvin in order to match daylight. But daylight ranges from 4800 Kelvin direct sun to over 9900 Kelvin blue skies. So even if you have LED lights with high CRI and the ability to vary their temperature, we need to know the temperature of the light or environment we want to match it to. During the days of film, this was done with a color temperature meter. Currently, this science has become so advanced, there are color temperature meters that can also display spectral nanometer graphs. If you look at a swatch book of lighting gels, you will find behind each gel is a white card with a code number and a nanometer chart, showing the amount of transmission of each wavelength of light. By subtracting red from an incandescent light by using a blue gel, you can make it white. If you stick to the basics, it's simple. CTB corrects tungsten to daylight, and CTO corrects HMIs to tungsten. But, if you want to take control of the color of your shots, you need to accept and understand the vast array of different color temperatures other than 3200 and 6400 Kelvin. The data camera and LED light have vastly broadened the range of cinematic color and simplified its control, so many cinematographers can dig deep into lighting wonderful color palettes. These are the data techniques I use to read, balance, and manipulate color using data cameras. The color temperature meter is incredibly expensive, but so is film. When playing with or balancing color on film, you don't get a second chance, and you don't see what you're shooting, so you often need to use one. But in data, there are better and cheaper ways to monitor your color in real time. Every data camera will automatically give a color temperature setting, or white balance. If you are lighting with tungsten, 
which is predominantly an orange combination of wavelengths, you can shoot a white or gray card and hit white balance. The camera will then recognize the orange light as white or set the color temperature to 3200 Kelvin which recognizes 3200K as white. Most modern production cameras or onboard monitors or broadcast monitors have vector scopes. This is the best and most accurate way to read the color of the image you are shooting. The scope is split into triangular slices. Each slice represents a color. The three important ones are red, green, and blue. This indicator, known as the cathode, a term left over from old tube scopes, appears at the scope's center. This is because the frame is true white. The center of the scope represents no color at all. The farther away from the center the cathode moves indicates the amount of color in the image. The zone the cathode is in represents the predominant wavelength of light. If my camera was set at a color temperature of 6400 Kelvin and I shone a tungsten light on a subject, the vector would veer towards the yellow. If I read with my light meter an ambient of 5600 Kelvin and I added a cheap LED light, it would cool the shot down to 6800 Kelvin. This would need constant monitoring using the meter, but it would be instantly apparent on the vector scope as it veered off towards the blue. HMIs are often off temperature as the bulb's wavelengths vary with age. If I want to mix this light with tungsten, I would gel the tungsten with a CTB to cool it down to approximately 5600 Kelvin. So standard CTB will not be completely accurate. We could use CTO gel on the HMI bringing it down to tungsten and so on. By putting a white or gray card in front of the light you are shooting in, the vector will accurately show the color temperature of that light. Now, what if I was shooting at lights set to 3200 Kelvin, but my ambient light coming through the window blinds was 4600 Kelvin? I would first establish the temperature of the ambient light by shooting the card and clicking through the color temperature settings till the light was recognized as white. In this hypothetical demonstration, 4600 Kelvin. If I want this light to be balanced, I would want lights that are balanced at 4600 Kelvin. Neither of the conventional production lights are in this range. To find the corrective gel to shift them into range will take some calculation. And the question would be, do you have that gel available? So you end up taking for safety many gels you will never use on the shoot. One of the beauties of LED lights, like this aperture, that has a CRI of 95% is that you can set it to the exact color temperature you want to match your ambient light. It uses the same Kelvin table as your camera. Regardless of the types of lights you are using, the high CRI LED lights will be able to match them. These lights are truly changing the way we work. But there is more to good quality high functioning LED lights than just CRI. This light can be dimmed, but most importantly, it can change color, not just with temperature, but also with hue and saturation. And this is incredibly important. Using its ability to change color, it even has pre-programmed effects. Now I have shown you how to match and balance your color temperature, I'm going to tell you not to do it too often. And this is what this tutorial is really all about. When I first learned about temperature and color balance, I, like most new cinematographers, painstakingly read all my lights and balanced my ambience using color meters and nanometer charts to eventually conclude that my work actually looked much better before I filled my head with the knowledge it took to do so. The cinematographer in this inset is no ordinary cinematographer. It is Jeffrey Unsworth, perhaps best known for 2001 A Space Odyssey. He is among my favorite cinematographers. My favorite of his works is Raymond Polanski's Tess. It is a masterful use of color. Many cinematographers of this era viewed temperature and color not as a problem to be solved, but a tool to be used. I often play with mixed temperatures and hues to add life and individuality to the images.
if I set everything up neutral with my meter or vector scope, they would often look flat. I deliberately shot this frame at 2300 Kelvin without correction and used a blue 80 filter to push it further from white. If I did not, it would have looked like this. Someone asked me recently how I balanced when shooting with PAR 38s as they have a temperature of around 2800 Kelvin. I hope this film demonstrates how simple it would be to balance 2800 Kelvin to white, but my real answer would be I probably wouldn't. I am finding, as many new cinematographers learn about the advantages of LED lights with a high CRI, they are falling into the trap, as most new cinematographers do, of color balancing everything. This often leaves images looking flat and colorless. What the real advantage of a 95% CRI gives you is the ability and control to be creative knowing exactly what your light temperature and hue is, not just the ability to balance it. Incandescent lights are not all balanced at 3200 Kelvin, but they are what they are and you use them for their advantages, like cost efficiency, availability, distance of throw and their warm color. To consider a PAR 38 bulb not to be usable in cinematography because it only has a CRI rating of 80% is denying yourself the advantages of using PAR 38 bulbs. One of the great advantages of LED lights is its potential to alter its color, not just for color balance. But if color balance is why you want to use LEDs, then I strongly recommend you get one with a high CRI rating. But always remember, the manufacturers strive to hit these ratings so you can be creative with ease, so you don't have to constantly run around with color meters and swatch books and nano charts. They are not giving you these capabilities to suck all the color out of your images. They are giving them to you to make your job of being creative much easier. I hope this film will be useful to you.